The name of the Lord. Amen. 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 I want to say thank you to everyone that has joined us. Joined us. We want to say welcome to everyone that is in the house. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God for your presence in the house today. And we are here together again just praising the Lord. We want to thank those of you that are online that have joined us today. We're expecting a blessing from the Lord. We're grateful that you are able to join us and be a part of worship in service today. We pray that God will bless you where you are and you will bless God where you are. Amen. Welcome into the house of the Lord. Let us worship together. Come on, let's put our hands together and lift up the name of Jesus. For he alone is worthy. God bless you.
Everything to me. 
hands together for the Lord today. Come on. Come on, let's put our hands together for him. Let's worship and adore him. Let's call out his name. Somebody shout the name of Jesus in this place. Somebody who, who is excited, shout the name of Jesus. Hey, shout it like you really want to shout it. Ah, come on, shout it. Loud and clear. Somebody say Jesus. Yeah. Jesus in the midst of the storm. Jesus in the midst of everything. That seemed to turn upside down. lovely members and lovely visitors of the tri to the triumphant church. Come on, let's give a triumphant welcome to all visitors. <laughs> See, last week we spoke about chaos. I don't know if I speak this thing into existence. <laughs> Considering what we saw last week. But <laughs> we must pray for the United States of America. You see, many, many years ago, I went to the airport as a little kid to see my mom off to the United States. And when I look at this beautiful plane, American Airlines and say, wow. And then I started to look up and read about, about America and realize that America was on top of the world. And I still believe America is on top, on top of the world. But we have some people who I don't know where their minds are. In the third world, we call it a coup. I don't know the new word they are coming up with now, but in other words, we call it an over attempt to overthrow. But let me say this, church. Whatever your politics, whatever your politics are, I want to let you know that there is no solid foundation than Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus is the way. And anything that is built on Jesus will last. Oh, somebody bless God. Oh, somebody bless the Lord. Last week we started to talk about hope in chaos, in the midst of chaos, considering what went on in Jesus his birth, how so many babies were slaughtered and mothers and parents mourned because of the slaughter of their, of their children. Let me be honest, and if I, I really don't want to upset anyone, but we in our country need to repent to God. We have done, yes, many injustice. When we look at our young black men and young black women, they cannot walk freely on the road. And I'm not getting political, I'm speaking the truth. We have a system of injustice, institutional racism. 
But there's something about God in the midst of all that, how God still put hope in our heart. You see, we give God thanks to Martin Luther King, but our hope wasn't on Martin Luther King. Our hope was on the God that died Martin Luther King. Now we have seen over the years, many babies being stuck away in cages. We ought to be careful. And some of us are Republican and we cannot speak the truth, but we must speak the truth. Injustice is injustice. Police brutality is police brutality. Leaders with all their intention to be president are causing a, are causing a disaster. And that's what we see over the couple of days. We see many, many people who realize that the election for Joe, elect Joe Biden was fair, but still there are people who are pushing injustice and pushing all the many ills to cause chaos in our communities. Well, let me get to the word. In the time of Jesus' birth, they had to, Mary and Joseph had to flee. Flee from insecure king. We have many leaders that are insecure. But we want to see hope on today. Bow your head with me and let us pray. Let's pray for this country. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray for all the disaster that is going on in our community with this COVID. Father, we, we stretch our hands to you. We look to you. We, we bend our knees looking to you who, who is our hope, realizing that there is no hope. We pray for our country, the United States of America this morning. We pray, God, that you give us leaders that have a heart for you, Jesus. Not only in words, but in deeds. We pray for those, the many victims of COVID. We pray for many, many, oh God, that have suffered last week as they break into the capital, into the Senate, into all the various governmental bodies. We ask of you, Jesus, that you so bring peace in the midst of all that is going on. Jesus, we pray for your peace. We pray for hope. And we ask of you, Lord, that you bless the leaders of the land. Guide the heart of our president, President Donald Trump, and even the president to come, President-elect Joe Biden. Guard their heart that they will fear you and trust you. We pray for our communities, God, that they've been suffering, that you will bring healing in the name of Jesus. And even if this day, a day of hope, we pray, Jesus, that you will so bless us that we can bless others. Remember our communities, that God, you will stand in the midst of us. Bring healing, bring prosperity, bring deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's stand and give God a praise. Come on, stand up your feet and give God a praise. Wow, you're praising God as if you're scared of praising. We are not too scared to praise God. 
We ought not to sh ashamed to shout loud. We ought not to be intimidated, but we ought to make sure we give God our very best. Come on, let me hear you give God our very best. Hey! Hallelujah! Praise God. You may be seated. In Matthew, we dealt with Jesus fleeing, Jesus' parents fleeing into Egypt. And we went to all the, all the many good things that happened. But today, I want to let you know that whatever you are thinking, Jesus began his life as a refugee and a stranger in a foreign land, in a foreign country. And, G and the Lord God could have done it another way, but he see fit that this way was best. He, God, he never made a mistake. And he will never, or will ever make mistake. Because he wanted to ch show humanity or teach humanity a lesson. No one is an island. And the moment you think you have reached to that level where you need no one, God help you. This country, the United States, beautiful country that I love, is built on immigrants, aliens. And some of us are here, God helped the way we came, but we came. And to God be the glory because our family and loved one have benefited from that. And even those back home have benefited greatly because every now and then you send, you send help because they are need. Jesus wanted to teach us a lesson. And for those who support baby being locked away in cages, young children, I come to irritate you. And those that may be watching on Facebook, I come to irritate you. Because your theology is not right. Because Jesus said, listen, in Matthew 25, I was hungry and you feed me. Or you give me food. I was thirsty and you give me to drink. Watch this. And this one gets to me more. I was a stranger. And you took me in. Then the king said, the king, then the, and the king answered and said to them, Surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one, watch this, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you know what? You do it unto me. It doesn't matter how conservative you are. It doesn't matter how liberal you are. What you have done for the least in the communities, the least in our society, you're doing it unto God. Oh God, somebody bless God in this place. We need to talk a little bit about the significance of Bethlehem. Because it has such great importance to the life of Jesus Christ. And all of us are wrapped up in that scenery of Jesus' birth. And all going back in Genesis 35, when Jacob, first wife, died in childbirth. Mm. The first mention, as I said, was when Jacob's wife, beloved wife, the one that she, the one that he loved so much, died in childbirth. And they named the child 
Oh God, watch this. You got to get this. Son of my sorrow. Genesis 35. Son of my sorrow. And then Jacob renamed that child and called him Benjamin, son of my right hand. Now, if you don't think Jesus is all wrapped up in those two names, you're making a mistake. Jesus is in those two names. Because Jesus, both his names relate to Jesus Christ. For he was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Grief and pain. Isaiah 53 verse 3. And in Acts 5 31 says, And he was now the son of God's right, come on, talk to me, right hand. Let me tell you this. You know how you know that the gospel, the word of God is true? They can talk about it in the Old Testament, Pastor Watson, and it comes to manifestation in the New Testament. They can talk about it way back in centuries and centuries, but guess what? It's happening even now. And even a greater dimension tomorrow. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. She she died in childbirth. But the vision, the vision of the Lord God Almighty still carry on. You see, Jacob saw Bethlehem. As a place of death. But the mere fact that Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. Remove the stigma of death. And bring life. Not only life, but hope. And a new destiny. You are a plan of God. You are in the destiny of God. Way back in Genesis 35, you were in the thought of God. We're talking about hope. Nothing surprises God and all the drama that went on in Bethlehem didn't really surprise the Lord God Almighty. It was in his plan. Some people always wonder, well, Jesus is pulling one out of the hat. Oh no, there's no such thing about him pulling anything out of the hat. Everything that he does, he does with purpose. Everything that he, that he, that everything that he does, he does it with a, with a vision. And guess what? You are a part of it. Oh God, look at you. Look at me. You and I are part of God's plan. You're looking in, and you're watching on Facebook and on the website. I come to let you know that you are a part of God's plan. And it doesn't matter how things look right now. Oh God. It doesn't matter how confusing you are. You are still a part of God's plan. And God has hope for you. So God, you right now feeling as if the world has gone upside down and you just feel as if you don't have a future. I come to let you know with God there is future. With God there is a tomorrow. Oh God, somebody praise God in this. Woo! Jesus. 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 Hope in the midst of chaos. 2020 was a year that came in like a wrecking ball. And surprisingly, 2021 came in like a wrecking ball. Also, the world. Last week and even now, the whole media 
the whole world were looking at America. What is going on? And many people, were, they were crying. Many people were groaning. I had to catch myself because I said to myself, where are the police? Where are the National Guard? Where are the military? Where? Then myself, I'm reminded that if it was black lives that matter, the place would have been stormed with police, military, and all different guns and military equipment would be there pointing, ready to shoot down. Lord Jesus, I don't want to preach this by God. All, let me say my white brothers and sisters, they went in and they walked in. They snatched windows and cheered them doors and went in. Not even went in. They, they walked in. But guess what? There were some, there were some demonstrators earlier in the last year that were run over and all the many things happened to them. America, we need God. We cannot have churches as usual. See, church world, especially we in America, being messed up. Because we have, we have made Jesus a white Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, I wish you can stand this message. We have made Jesus a white Jesus, Pastor, Pastor Lindsay. And everything around Jesus is white. So automatically, Jesus is preferred to certain people. But I come to let you know your theology is wrong. Your theology is, be, is way beyond his hearsay. Because my God told me he came to redeem mankind. Oh, he gave hope to us that have no hope. Oh, my God. And I come to let you know this, brother and sister, as church cannot continue the same way, we need to understand that God is counting on us to impact for him. We need to now clear our calendars. I said it last week to some of my, one of my friends. I said, you know what? God, it's in my spirit. Let's to clear the whole church calendar. No convention, no this, no this. I, I wonder what triumphant would do. We would be so upset. Many of us maybe would have walked out of here. They're not having convention. They're not having this. But what if God to clear the calendar? Clear it completely and let us not focus on departmentalized ministry, but the whole church getting involved in, in soul winning. What if we clear the calendar and let God's church be God's church and everyone involved in the church get involved in soul winning? Everyone come uh, get involved in a great commission. Everyone being involved in soul winning. Oh God. Though times seem chaotic, God still wants us to live in hope. And He still wants us to work. And He wants to work with us. Yes, He wants to work with us because. He, there's a task for us to accomplish. Hey, don't believe because of COVID, we're just going to sit down. No, God has given us the time to be a witness. Church, don't just get all centered right now on COVID. But let's now work as we have 
call us to work in such a time as this. Because there are many people, God is saying, pull them from the mouth of the grave. Pull them from hell. And you and I are called to do that test. In other words, you and I must bring hope to others. It is our duty. That's what God gave us the responsibility to do. In other words, I wasn't just saved to come here and look good on Sunday morning in my three-piece suit and this. No. You and I must be involved in the work that Jesus called us to do. Oh, somebody praise God. You may not even want to hear this, but it's true. The world needs hope. But guess what? Are we going to look to the government to bring hope to the world? Are we going to look to the demonic force that is patrolling the atmosphere to bring hope to the world? No. We are the vessel that Jesus Christ want to use. We are his hands. We are, we are his mouthpiece. Come on, church. I want you to get this. We are his mouthpiece. We are his thoughts. He, he will not speak to a donkey to be a witness to the world. He want to speak to us. Oh, somebody bless God. This is, how, this is how you can join him in this task that he has for us to do. One, stay focused on the main thing. The main thing. Somebody said the main thing. In other words, making the main thing the main thing. Yes, making the main thing the main thing. We have some time. We have, we have, we have scattered ourselves. We are so busy. We have no time for God. And I, even myself, to get so into the politics thing now and all the many things that if I don't watch it, the first thing I grab for in the morning is to grab my cell phone to see what's the new happenings. Oh yeah, let me be truthful. Because we have, we have been programmed like this now. We have all these medium where we want to just keep up with the new thing. But guess what God is saying? Stay focused on the main thing. Keep in the big picture of the great commission. Making disciples for Jesus Christ. Don't get distracted and disheartened by all the going-ons in our community, in the world, in our city, in our country. Keep our eyes on the Lord and, and he will help us maintain our perspective. Our perspective. Our perspective of what he called us for who we are, our duty. Oh God, hear this. And the psalmist said, my heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Oh somebody bless God. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Sometimes we are too splitted all over the place with our different ideologies. Let me say this. Ministries in the church should big up anybody. And this is the church to work on the outside to affect change in the life of humanity. Oh, somebody bless God. Number two, keep living in hope even when it doesn't make sense. And right now, God knows it doesn't even make sense. When the structure for government in the world, in the, in the United States, have been challenged by some rebels and rebels politicians, that you, people have been shaken. But let me say this keep living in hope in the midst of all things, 
even when it doesn't make sense. Oh God, how if I keep on praying through the process and tapping into the will of God, the God-given opportunity that comes your way. Because in this time, guess what? There are opportunities that will come our way. Oh, yes. There are opportunities that God is sending every day to us. And some of us, yes, we have been distracted, yes. But God is still saying, listen, I want you to still live in hope. I want you to still be connected with me because I want to use you. I want to give you opportunities to make something different. In this time of chaos, brothers and sisters, I'm coming now. Learn to maintain a clear communication with God so that he can alert you of the opportunities that will come your way. Well, you know, I'm going to talk about this sharing faith, yes. But even business and investment. So often in church and members, we believe that God doesn't want us to be, to widen our borders. But I come to let you know that even in this season, there are opportunities for investment. There are opportunities for business. The interest rate is low, low. Young people start looking into the opportunity of buying homes, creating wealth. Oh, somebody bless God in this place. Yes, young people, middle age or single who don't have a house. Now is a time you want to look and see how you can invest. Taking opportunities of what God is sending to you right now. Oh, not only just doing investment, but spending time with your family. It's sad to say that even in this season last year, there are so many people who get divorced because they irritate each other so much. They spend so many time together in COVID that then. As a matter of fact, they hadn't used to that. And they didn't really know how to spend time with each other. And so he ended up fighting and quarreling, bickering, and all the many things that went on, dramas upon dramas. But let me say this, it is the right time to get to know your family. The right time to spend time with your family. The right time. To spend time with the children, knowing about them. Spending time to get to know them. And to, in the greater dimension, spend time to know God. Oh, somebody bless God. In Nehemiah, Nehemiah was living a comfortable life. But he got news that the city his walls, the temple, and all the many priests was broken down. He did, did he believe that he should still stay comfortable where he was? So he excused himself and went down to rebuild. There are walls in your life that need rebuilding. Many of us our walls have been broken down. The walls from our hearts have been broken down. Walls in a relationship with each other have been broken down. March couple, March couple, you, your walls have, some of your walls have been broken down. But now is the time to rebuild. Or oh, somebody praise God. Somebody bless God. Rebuild it now. As you invest, rebuild. You see, even when he was 
trying to rebuild the wall. Your smart folks, symbolic crew, and henchmen, and, 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 and let's say passing, said something which stirred my spirit. Whatever they build, if, if, if even a fox goes over it, <laughs> what, it, he will what? Break it down. Break it down. Break down the stone. What an audacity. Then, obviously, Nehemiah was so focused on hope. He was so focused. He said, listen, so build he the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. My brothers and sisters, as you live in hope, take opportunities of what God is giving to you. My, my friends out there in, in the media land, there are opportunities knocking you at your door. Take opportunities. Grab a hold of those opportunities. And there are opportunities to serve God even now. Yes. So maybe you haven't been saved. Maybe you weren't thinking about Jesus. But I come to let you know that Jesus was thinking about you. Oh yes. He was thinking about you. He, he, matter of fact, he's interested in you. And you that are here today, God, he, he's still interested in you. You don't know Jesus, he's interested in you. You have no time for Jesus, he's interested in you. You don't want to be associated with Jesus, he, have, he is interested in, with you. He's still interested in you. Father, I pray that you bless your people. Those who have given up on hope. Those who have given up on themselves. Those who have given up on opportunities. Those who have thrown the towel. Those who have literally walked away from all the many things that you have called them to do. I ask of you now, Jesus, that you so visit their heart and bring them back home to you, Father. Save those that need to be saved. Strengthen those that need to be strengthened. Oh, God, wake those up that need to be wakened. Father, I pray even those that are watching that you will so touch their heart that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I close by this. I bless you unto them. And I pray as we live in hope, we will live trusting you in Jesus' name. Come on, let somebody praise the Lord. Let somebody give God a praise. Come on, let's give God a praise. Let somebody praise him. And just maybe you're here and you have given up on yourself. You have given up on your hope. You have given up on the plan that God has placed in you. Maybe you have turned your back on all the good things that God so desire for you. We want to pray with you. I want to pray for you now. Maybe, just maybe, the opportunities that knock on your door and you're, you're, free of, you're fearful. I'm going to ask you to come. Let, let me pray with you that God will give you all the strength to run with his great blessing and opportunities that he sent to you. Come now. I'm going to ask the church to come. Those that can stand right in the cross, let's come. I'm going to feel like praying for the church. Come on, church. Come, church. This is a season that God has sent. And God want to use us. God want to do great things in this season. God want to do great things. And he want to do great things through us. And through you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
to Jesus. I'm going to ask my darling wife, Miss McLeod, to come. I'm going to ask her to pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace even now, God. We come to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Lord God, as we, your people, gather together, help us, God. We need help from above, God. Help that only comes from you. Oh God, in this time of trouble, Oh, God, we need your help this morning. Say, perilous times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. But God, we know you're still in control. You are sovereign, you are supreme. You are omnipotent and mighty. So we, your children, God, gather together. Oh, God, and as we fast and pray and beseech your mercy seat, Lord, we pray that you will send help from above. Hallelujah, God. Ah, Lord, bid our anxious fear to subside in the name of Jesus. Take charge and take control of the anxiety. Oh, God, and bind the spirit of depression. Oh, God, and despondency that wants to come. Oh, God, and overwhelm our soul this morning. Father, I pray that you will speak peace to every heart, uh, every mind, God, every spirit. Speak peace right now, I pray, in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, not only in the sanctuary, but God of heaven in the nation and in the world, God. Uh, let your peace permeate and saturate. Oh, God, the atmosphere. Lord God, as the angel echoed the saying, peace on earth and goodwill to all men. I pray even now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that there will be peace in the United States of America, peace in the White House, oh God, peace in the hearts of men and women. In Jesus' name, peace in Jerusalem. Oh God, the seven continents of the earth, I pray, that there will be peace, every nation, every tribe, and every tongue, God, I pray that your peace will form on fine men and women, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we look to you even now, and we submit and surrender ourselves to you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and I, I pray even now, Lord, that you will comfort our hearts Comfort our soul. Comfort us, God. Comfort those who are weary. Oh, God, those who are weak, oh, God. Comfort and strengthen them, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have your way this morning. Have your way this afternoon. Oh, God, as we walk through those doors, let your spirit, God, oh, God, let your comfort and spirit walk with us, God, and talk with us through the course of the week. Lord God, whatever betides, oh God, you go before us, oh God, and cut and clear the way in the name of Jesus. Oh God, make straight the crooked paths and smooth out the rough places, God. My God, provide for every need, my God, those who are in need of food, oh God, food insecurities. God, I pray that you will provide for them. Those, oh God, that don't have the rent to pay, the mortgage, the bills are piling up, oh God, unemployed, no jobs. God, I pray for provision. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God that provide. Provide for the needs of your people, my God. Some just have the last meal, oh God, as the woman. She said we will eat and die, but God send a miracle, a provision, God, even now to your people. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Send a miracle. Oh God, a provision. Oh God, send a prophet, a priest. Oh God, a good Samaritan, someone somewhere. Oh God, to minister to the needs of those, oh God, that are destitute this morning. God in heaven, meet the needs, oh God. Send help, God. We believe and we trust you. Oh God, that's why we pray and we call on you, God. For we know not what to do, but our eyes, our eyes, our eyes, God, are upon you this morning. Bless everyone in the sanctuary. Near and far, bless your people. Oh God, bless your people. Immediate land, bless and prosper your people. God, we call out to you because we know you are able. You are Adonai, you are the God that's more than enough. You are El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. And we give you praise, we give you honor and glory. We bless your servant this morning, God. As he brought what your word, keep your hands upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh anointing be poured out upon him. Fresh oil from your throne. Oh God, send forth your ministering spirit even now, God. And minister to him, oh God, in the night hours, in the darkness of the night. Oh God, when no one else knows and understands. Lord, I pray that you will minister to your servant and fill him up, God. Oh God, fill him up, Jesus, to overflow, God, in every area of his life, God. Be in control, be in control. Father, we thank you. We praise, honor, and adore you. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church worship their God. Oh, we bless your holy name. We praise your mighty name. Hallelujah, God. Glory to God. I give myself Let's just praise the Lord in the house. Come on, let's worship God in the house. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship together. Let us worship. Let us worship. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It's, uh, we've come to a very important part of our service. Amen. Did you receive a word this afternoon? Did you receive a word this afternoon? Amen. All right, now we've come to the point of giving, a very important part of our service. I'm going to ask you to get your offerings together. Amen. Amen. We have hope this afternoon. In spite of what we see, in spite of all that has taken place, we have hope. Amen. 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 And Jesus is our hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean, wholly lean on Jesus. Someone say Jesus. Jesus. Someone say Jesus. Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have your offering in the house? Talk to me. Do you have your offering in the house? All right, we're going to let you go, but we just want to get, we want to get to the point of giving right now very important part. We cannot leave without this part. This is a part of worship as well. Amen. So if you have your offering, I want you to stand with me. All right, you have your offerings. All right, stand with me. Amen. I want you, we're going to do our declaration this afternoon. Amen. And it says, as I move towards a triumphant life, I accept all 
supernatural concepts, supernatural concepts. and heavenly ideas, heavenly ideas. That, God has that God has to lead me to my destiny. To lead me to my destiny. I, so I sow triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I live triumphantly. I live triumphantly. I live triumphantly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these gifts. We pray, God, that you'll bless it, multiply it, oh God, and be all over it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give. the month of January, the first fruit offering will be collected. At the Triumphant Church of God, there are several ways that you can give. There's PayPal, Givelify, on our website, www.ttcog.com, or in person at 7 Sutter Avenue. Sunday, January 10th to January 31st is our 21-day fast. Our theme is Anchored in Hope, taken from Hebrews 619. Be sure to join us every day at 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on our prayer line listed in our flyer for an hour of power. Let's start off the year right by seeking the face of God as one body. Save the date. March 13th through the 14th is the Triumphant Church of God's annual women's convention. This year's theme is From Ashes to Beauty taken from Isaiah 61, verse 3. The weekend will be filled with powerful speakers 
impactful worship, and a mighty move of God. Be sure to join us then. These are this week's triumphant announcements. Bear these announcements in mind, and until next time, have a wonderful week, and remember, live triumphantly.